Hi. Um, last e- couple of years ago, before there was an international pandemic, in February of 2020, I went to New Zealand to visit our friends at Weta Workshop. Um, I really, like, I feel like the southern end of the North Island of New Zealand is a good portion of my family. Uh, And I went to visit them along with uh, some tested folks back in, like I said, February of 2020. And I went out to Richard Taylor's uh, lovely farm and spent uh, a bunch of time out there. It's totally idyllic and incredible. Um, And on our way back from the farm into into Wellington proper, Richard's like, (laughs) I'm not gonna do a Richard impression, but Richard says, hey, let's stop here and see my mates. And his mates uh, are like uh, train enthusiasts who have actual trains, like full size trains. And they have about a mile and a half of track and they restore old engines and steam. And I mean, it's it's insane. Uh, picture, picture my shop, but like, this is, my shop is a total of over, just over 2000 square feet. I mean, this and all of that, it's about 2000 square feet. Imagine like 20,000 square feet where instead of little things lying around, little bits of mechanics like I have, like this, they have like trains. <laughs> it, I felt very at home in this place. Uh, and they let me drive one of their trains, drive. I mean, you know, under supervision, they let me push a lever and pull a lever and move a train and stop a train. It was... I mean, like everything that happens to me in New Zealand, it was just another fantasy camp day. Anyway, one of those lovely train folks, Caleb, uh, visited is visiting the United States and came by my shop yesterday. And <clears throat> he was looking around and he said, oh, I see you've got a, um, a data logger, a tachograph. And he meant this thing and told me that this isn't just um, a clock and a speedometer, that in fact, inside here is a, a spool of paper with a needle on it that, that monitors your speed and that they use these things on trains. Now, why do I have this? I have this because I think this was in, do you remember that famous Mythbuster shot where I drove the vehicle with a cow catcher through the uh, the double row of 20 cars and sent them all flipping. One of the great shots we've ever done. I believe that this was in that 14 speed truck and I I yanked it out before we destroyed the truck. That's, that's how I go. Uh, and this has been sitting on my shelf ever since. And I had no idea it had such interesting technology inside of it. I just got it because I, I love this old industrial type of technology. I love, I love the fact that there were meetings about how to encase this. And someone was like, I want to do it with these fins and these things. And we'll do it in cast aluminum. And his bosses were like, yeah, go for it. And they were like, yeah, let's give it orange hands. We're like, yeah, (laughs) dude. (laughs) Industrial design in the early part of the 20th century is um, a magical thing. Have I used magical already too many times in this video? Okay, so there's a lock here, I, so I can't get inside yet. Um, you don't know how much I wanted to open this video with. This is the lockpicking lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Stenco stereo topograph. Okay, anyway, you know, um, I love the lockpicking lawyer. One of my favorite, favorite favorite YouTube channels. His consistency is deeply satisfying. Um, yes, in response to your query, we we have corresponded, Lockpicking Lawyer and I, and we have some ideas about collaboration. But uh, I'm going to try and get in this. Okay, um, anyway, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to try and pick this lock. It does not look like a very complicated lock. It looks like a... Um, 
simple wafer lock. Is that what you call that? The kind that closes glass windows in the store? Uh, I'm gonna take a close look at this and I have some toolage to apply. All right, all right. Yeah, this isn't gonna be a video about my lock picking skills or my lock pick sets. Um, it is literally just a hobby and I'm so like semi poor at it that uh, I don't want to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mostly love videos in which I feel like I have a point of view and I, lock picking is definitely one in which, like I've been doing it since I was 16. Um, I found, okay, I'm talking about lock picking. Uh, all right, let's see here. It is hard to get a purchase on this because it's a big fat wide opening. Oh, maybe I could double stack. Hey, that's nice. Well, it was a pretty simple lock, three wafers, and I was able to get it turning. Um, awesome. All right, let me pack these guys up. The only reason I have such a good collection is that I'm profligate and obsessive. Um, this just doesn't speak to like an incredible skill at this. All right, here we go. Uh, so, welcome to the grand opening. I hope I turned it in the right direction. Um, dude, that is thrilling. Okay. Let's take a look inside here. Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Now, this is what the tachometer, tach, taco graph looks like from the outside. We've got a clock and a speedometer. And on the inside, the, okay. So what we've got here is there's a clock over here. And I can tell that there's a clock over here because, well, there's a clock over here. But also <clears throat> there's the winder for the clock. And you can see by how worn away it is that it has been wound many times. Here is the hand set, also been worn away by many, many thousands of fingers. Um, so you, I guess you would wind this, get that clock going. <clears throat> and then when the clock went, it would spin this wheel. And when it spins this wheel, when it spins this wheel, there is, I believe there would be here a circular piece of paper. Uh, it would register on this rectangle. It would slip one end underneath here. And these two rails are there to make sure that these three needles have purchased. What are these three needles? Well, these three things poke through this line here. And they are part of the data logging system in here. So uh, when you go, you connect up a shaft off of your motor that goes to here and it spins this. This is a flexi shaft drive, much like um, every car's speedometer until, you know, the last 20 years. Um, and it spins this. What is this? This is a magnificent little device called a governor. And uh, you know how when an ice skater is spinning around and when they, when they open up their hands, they spin slower. And when they bring their hands in close to their body, they spin really fast. This operates on the same principle uh, so that as it spins, the trivial force of its spinning drives these weights outwards with a precision that tells you precisely how fast you're going. So when they spin out like this, you know, blah, 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 this moves up. Now, that also when these move, you'll notice that it turns a secondary lever. It, it operates a secondary lever here. You know, and there's a linkage from here up to there and gives this lever. So in addition to the speedometer needle, this lever is also measuring your speed and it is doing that with this little needle and etching it onto this piece of paper. Whether that's a little graphite point or it scrapes away, it doesn't really matter. That needle logs on here over time what your speed was. That's pretty cool. Um, 
there is another leave. There's two more levers. Um, I'm going to guess one of them is about distance traveled so that you could actually note where someone was when they were going, if you knew what track they were on. This last lever, I really... Maybe. Let's see here. Oh my God, I can't even tell you. This was just like doing this, and these are like little lead bullets attached to copper scissors on either side of this. And I got to tell you, when I do this, you can just feel this is manufactured to an incredibly high tolerance. There is not a, not just little or no backlash. There's absolutely no backlash. Um, <clears throat> the secondary lever. Oh, 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 wait. Maybe that. Huh. It seems to be sprung and only moves a little bit. Maybe that tells you when you've like had an accident or something, like this will bounce up and down. This one I'm pretty sure is very likely how the distance traveled. Um, now this guy here, down here we have this really interesting thing of a little bit of a copper horn, brass horn, that touches this micro switch right here. Now, when it touches this micro switch, what does that do? Well, that's connected up to this electromagnet. My guess is that turns on this light. And this light comes through here and says, hey, you're going too fast. <laughs> Let's see if that, I'm pretty sure that is what that does. Yep, yep, see that? Let's see right through it. All right. Um, yeah, let's take a look inside here. This. So I wonder what, what utility that has in the driving. I'm sure you will tell me in the comments. Thank you very much. Um, one interesting security feature here is this guy right here. What is that guy? Well, this guy lines up with this guy. And what I'm guessing that they do is they make a connection so that this thing won't operate while it's open, which this totally makes sense. That makes all the sense in the world. Getting a little closer, shall we? I just really can't get enough. There were, yeah, I just can't get enough of this kind of beautiful engineering. Look at that. Amazing. All right, so this one just does that. And Oh, I guess it could be, oh, you know what it could be doing, actually? The electromagnet could go when this goes, and this would be a, just a real specific, uh, you went too fast, uh, you were going not too fast. Yeah, it could be that. Um, yeah, I think because what I can see here, wow. There are still some things I don't understand. But let's flex this one more time. Ah, oh, so pretty. Okay. Totally mechanical data logging that potentially gives speed over time and location as well as logging events of going over the speed limit all in a mechanical device. I mean, I recognize this whole tranches of you watching could do this on a Raspberry Pi or, you know, similar type of thing in minutes. This was rooms full of people figuring this out a hundred years ago, probably like a hundred years ago. Yeah, that stuff is magnificent to me. Yeah, I get really, really thrilled by that. Um, it's also from a mechanical engineering perspective. It is really great and useful to me to wrap my head around stuff like this. Um, it is so easy 
In modern times, it is so easy to believe that we are like a pinnacle of uh, various kinds of engineering because we sort of think that there's always this progression, but that progression isn't constant and it's not totally linear. Uh, in many cases, it might be linear to reach a very high state of sophistication for something like this that gets outdated by solid state electronics. And then there's a whole bunch of institutional knowledge built into something like this that disappear because it's no longer necessary. But that doesn't mean it wasn't a magnificent design achievement. So I open these things and one of my primary senses is humility, admiration, and uh, I'll just love, love opening up old stuff. Um, Actually, one more thing. This is another type of data logger. This is a night watchman's uh, 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 watch clock. So this, this will blow your mind if you haven't seen one of these things. Night watchman. A night watchman would wander, wander. A night watchman would go through their appointed rounds in the warehouse they were looking at. And let's say they were required to like travel to five points every two hours. Well, what there is, is back in the day, there would be a key at each of those five points and the watchman would go to each of those keys, stick it in here and turn it each time he got to that location. And this device on its inside would do the same thing. What I just opened is there would be a log in here that let his bosses know that he had uh, not shirked his pointed rounds. Um, I don't have the key for this. And it is, I gotta say, it's plausibly above me today to be able to undo this lock. Um, but now, I, but now, now I wanna get one of these with the keys because that's another entirely mechanical data logger to allow a post event review of the events. That's really, really cool. All right, that's enough of a deep dive into this show and tell. It wasn't a one day build, it was a show and tell. I got the slate wrong. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, yeah, let me know about other data loggers you know about old, ancient, ye olde uh, equipment, because this stuff is endlessly fascinating. And um, yeah, maybe I'll get some other data loggers and we'll take a deep dive into those too. I'm Adam Savage and I'll see you next time. One of the things I love about this channel is that we don't make how-to videos so much as we make what happened videos. And what almost always happens are mistakes and screw ups. In fact, they're completely integral to making and honestly to being a person. And to celebrate this, Tested has a new batch of demerit badges for the screw ups you will encounter in the shop. From left to right, we have touching your paint job, assembling things backwards, losing a tiny screw or part, gluing your fingers together and smashing your thumb. And frankly, if you haven't done both of these, even if you're not a maker, I just don't feel like you've experienced enough of the world. I'm not saying get out a hammer and smash your thumb, but I will tell you that the blacker your fingernail after the injury, the less it's gonna hurt in the long run. I almost forgot, these make excellent additions to your shop apron and they are available at tested-store.com.